Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to be talking about transition curves. So transition curves are basically the progression of your movement of a prop or a character from one keyframe to the next. Uh, we'll explore it in greater detail in just a moment here, but I'm going to start off with the basics first. So on the screen right now what I have is a simple ball, and you can see I've opened up the uh, uh, transform track here for the uh, ball item, and we have two keys in the transform track, at frame uh, 1 and frame 60, and if we just go ahead and play back, you can see we have a basic transition, we have a basic uh, movement from one point to the next. So very basic stuff. So like I mentioned before, transition curves allow you to uh, adjust the uh, process or the procedure of, of the movement from one point to the next and kind of modify it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this second keyframe here. I'm going to right click it and then you have the option here to select your transition curve presets. So this is where you can kind of experiment with different transition curves. It's pretty simple. Uh, you can experiment with, on, uh, experiment with it on your own time. One thing I wanted to mention is that uh, with iClone 7, we now have the default transition curve uh, set to the default here. Uh, in iClone 6, it was linear. So linear was the default in iClone 6. Uh, this one, we have a bit more of an ease in, ease out uh, as the default with iClone 7. So just so you're aware of that. And we have, you know, stuff like Accelerate, for example. And if we uh, have Accelerate, we can actually adjust the strength from like, you know, 50 to 100. And if we click it again, we'll have a much, uh, you know, faster acceleration. So we can adjust the strength there. And if we change it back to 1, we'll pretty much have a very linear uh, transition from one point to the next, okay? So I like to kind of have, like, you know, for fairly high acceleration, you know, for more dynamic and interesting movement. Okay, and there's decelerate as well. You can adjust the uh, strength for decelerate. You can adjust uh, the strength for smooth. Uh, a lot of these you can adjust the strength for. Some of them you can't, though. So the gain momentum before move, for example, you'll see the strength will be disabled. Uh, this one kind of goes backwards a little bit before it uh, goes forward. And there's a uh, damping here and uh, gain momentum and damp. Okay, so you can combine all these. And there's a couple of stirring ones here, bouncing ones, that are pretty interesting as well. You can use these in a variety of situations, which I'll show you in just a moment. Okay, so again, you can experiment with these on your own time. There's tons of them here. And this stock one just goes from one point to the next. Boom, boom, like that. Okay, and uh, so on and so forth. So I'm not going to spend too much time just kind of going through those. You can kind of uh, see what they're like on their own uh, on your own time. Uh, but I'm going to show you a, a different example here. We're going to actually combine multiple uh, transition curves together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up a, a different project here that I have uh, prepared. And in this project, you'll see that we have a number of different transition curves. We have this kind of prop that's kind of morphing and, and uh, scaling from uh, different shapes. Okay, I'm going to zoom out on the timeline here real quick so you can see all the different uh, uh, keys here. Okay, so your basic, uh, you know, very linear movement, very soft and uh, normal. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, combine a couple of these uh, transition curves to get a more dynamic movement. And we'll compare it to the original uh, after I'm finished here. So on this first one, I'm going to select transition curve presets for the first one here. And we're going to change this one to accelerate. We're going to pump that acceleration up to a value of 100. So we'll have a very, like, zoop. Okay. And then what, what we're going to do at the end of the acceleration here for the next key, between this keyframe and this keyframe here, we're going to change this. Uh, to sudden start with elastic end. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. You can see we have this kind of uh, acceleration and then a kind of a boom, kind of movement like that. So it kind of just uh, accelerates and comes to a sudden stop with an elastic end. Okay, so that's pretty cool. You can combine those two together. And let's keep on doing the rest of them here. So let's go uh, to the next keyframe here. And this one will do acceleration again with 100, a value of 100. Okay, and uh, once I have that taken care of, I'll press the tab key. You can press the tab key to go uh, between keyframes. So you can press shift tab to go to the previous keyframe. Okay, so tab and shift tab will allow you to do that. And so this one, after the acceleration, we're going to change this to end in a bounce. We'll just have this one end in a bounce like this. Okay, so for, fairly similar to the elastic end like that. This one goes like kind of ends in a bounce. So we have a bang kind of thing like that. Let's press tab and go to the next one here. So for the end in a bounce, after that, we're going to have elastic start and uh Sudden end. Okay, so we'll go to elastic start and sudden end. There it is right here. Okay, and then for the next one, we will have sudden start and sudden end for the next two here. Sudden start, or stuttering start rather, and st sudden start rather, and elastic end right here. Okay, so we'll have that, and then for this one, we'll have uh, sudden start, elastic end as well. And then for the last one, finally, we'll have elastic start and end. So this one will be uh, this one over here. All right. So here we go. Let's go ahead and play this back real quick. We have a bring -on, bring -on, kind of stretching like that and bouncing and then, you know, much more dynamic and sudden and uh, interesting movement. Okay. So that's how you can really combine uh, multiple uh, transition curves into a single prop movement 
and get uh, more uh, interesting and dynamic results like that. Let's take one final example here. I'm going to get, uh, show you some character animation this time. Uh, but before I do that, I want to show you the original, of course, here. So let's go back to the scene uh, manager. And in the scene manager, I'm going to make this default box visible, okay? So we can compare the two animations between the linear and the transition curve one. So let's see. One of them's a lot more interesting and uh, fun to watch. All right, so that's the comparison between the two, just linear versus the combined transition curves there. All right, let's go to the, uh, the last example here. So I'm going to load up this uh, cartoon default project. We don't need to save this for now. And in this cartoon default project, you'll see if we uh, bring up the timeline a little bit, we have all these keys and the various uh, body part tracks using the motion layer key editor. And let's just play this back real quick. So we have, you know, very linear and smooth movement from one point to the next. And you can see it's almost almost too smooth. You know, you need to have a much more cartoony, dynamic, like, uh, uh, transition between the two, between the uh, different poses here. And you can see I've actually indicated the poses with uh, flags here in the uh, project. So you can see this flag is uh, one, po one pose here. And we transition to this one, and then to this one, and then to this one. And in between that, I have various, uh, you know, intermediary poses, okay? So for this flag between this flag and this flag, we have him kind of going down like this and then coming back up. If we took out these two uh, these two keyframes here by just clicking and dragging the absolute key uh, track there, we can just uh, delete those. Then we would just have from one side to the next. Okay, he wouldn't be going down with that exaggerated movement. It would just be from one point to the next, which is okay, but, uh, you know, just to add a bit more uh, of, uh, of an interesting look to your animations, it's always good to have kind of intermediary poses and blend those in together. So let's go ahead and press Control Z to restore those. And we're going to go ahead and uh, have a couple of these. We're going to mess around with a couple of these here. So what you can do is uh, you want to make sure you can't just click on the top uh, absolute key here. You actually need to make sure you select all the separate keyframes for the separate body tracks here as well. All right, so if I just select this uh, torso, for example, and I right click and go to Transition Curve Presets. Whoops, I actually deleted that. Let's do that again. Transition curve presets. So this will only affect the torso itself. It won't affect uh, the head, arm, and everything like that. So only the torso will have this transition curve preset. So what you want to do, you want to, what you want to make sure you do rather, is hold the control key and click and drag and select all the keys. Okay. And then right click and go to transition curve presets. And now this will affect all the keys there. So for the second one here, we're just going to go ahead and, uh, use a gain momentum before move. Okay. So it's kind of, kind of, going to kind of go back like that. And then for the next one, let's go ahead and do the next ones here. So again, control and click and drag on these ones here. And you can make sure your playhead is uh, at that point as well. Uh, so this one will do uh, acceleration to 100. I have all these written out here because it's kind of hard to remember all these ones. So now we have a uh, game momentum before move and acceleration like that. Okay. And then for the third one here, let's again, hold control, click and drag. Whoops. Not like that. So zoom in a little bit on our timeline. There we go. And uh, for this one, again, make sure your playhead is right there. We're going to use Sudden Start and Elastic End. Okay, so this one right here. All right, so now what we have is we have this, you know, acceleration from one point to the next. And then a very nice, uh, you know, dynamic uh, feel just like this. Okay, he's like, wow, I have an idea. All right, so Sudden Start, Elastic End. Let's continue this with the uh, with the rest of them here. Okay, so for this one, we will just uh, make sure the playhead's over there as well. And uh, let's... This one is gain momentum before move again. So before he's starting his next movement, uh, we're going to go ahead and gain momentum a little bit here. And then for this uh, final uh, pose here, for this second pose rather, uh, we're going to go ahead and make sure the play is over that. So that's gain momentum before move. Now we have a damping one. Okay, so I'm going to damp it just like this. So it's going to just kind of... And then you can see there's a little bit of a movement from there to there where he gets to the pose and then kind of goes back a little bit. Uh, which is the damping transition curve there. All right, so let's continue on. After damping, we're going to go ahead and use uh, acceleration 100 on this one. So again, click and drag and select all those keys. And we'll go ahead and accelerate. Accelerate to the value of 100, okay? So keep make sure that strength is at 100 there. I, I generally like to do that. And then we'll, at the f uh, second or third pose rather here, uh, again, we'll click and drag, select all those keys. And this time we will use a... Uh, damping one more time okay so here we have the damping all right and so he's kind of just you know, kind of going back like this that's the final pose but he kind of goes back a little bit uh because of the damping uh key which is a you know, kind of a more uh interesting way to to do things using that damping key because it kind of goes beyond the 100 percent level and then kind of goes eases back in 
All right. So then we'll go ahead to uh, this frame here. And here we only have one single key. And this is, this is for the uh, left arm track. Okay. So for the left arm track, we're going to go ahead and just choose sudden start and elastic end. So right here. Okay. So you can see the uh, left arm by itself. We'll kind of just have this interesting little sudden start elastic end. We can even do something like elastic start with sudden end. Okay. And just kind of have like something like that or sudden uh, shutter, uh, stuttering start. There's too many stutters here. And we can also gain momentum and damp as well, which I think is kind of a, maybe more interesting or, or damping one. Uh, gain momentum before the move. It's kind of a good one for this one, I think. So let's go ahead and just keep that. We have that kind of very uh, interesting and uh, dynamic kind of whoop where his arm just kind of pops up to the where he's going to wave here. And then we'll go to the second one here where the waves are starting. And let's move our timeline over a little bit. So we have all these keyframes here. So this one, we only have the torso and the left arm. Okay, so we're going to do different ones for the torso and the left arm. We're going to go for the top one, the torso. So we're going to choose sudden start and elastic end right here. Okay, so that's the torso. And you can see that it's only the torso moving. So the uh, from here to here, oops, we need to go back and uh, change that here. Yeah, okay, so that, that's the torso movement there, okay. And the hand will be different. So we're going to change the uh, the left arm then. Uh, we'll change the left arm one to a smooth. All right, so let's go ahead and use a smooth. So it's kind of like an ease in, ease out. Like that, all right. So then we have this, uh, so like that, and it's smooth. And then for this frame right here, frame uh, 272, we're gonna have a uh, sudden start and elastic end for everything. So I'm gonna just click and drag on all these keys here, and uh, oops, make sure we select them all there. Make sure the playhead's over that point. So sudden start and elastic end here. Okay. And then uh, for the last ones, we'll have a uh, smooth, smooth, and smooth. Okay. So just go ahead and. Uh, whoops, don't want to make sure that you don't uh, have a uh, key selected when you hold control and click and drag because you'll make copies of those keys. All right, so let's just do this and so let's use smooth for his wave and uh, smooth and smooth again. All right, there we go. And finally, the last one here. Let's go ahead and select all those and smooth one more time. Okay, so that's pretty much what we're going to work with. Uh, so basically, you know, combining all these transition curves together to help your character animation. Like I mentioned, you can uh, use different transition curves for the different body parts, which is really a, a cool option. So this dynamic kind of bounce and then whoop, whoop. Okay, so he kind of just pops in and has a really uh, dynamic and bouncy kind of animation there. So transition curves are really essential to creating more realistic and cartoon-like a more dynamic feel to your animations. Uh, I really recommend, you know, getting used to them. And especially you can use them with the motion layer editor, uh, the keys from the motion layer editor to really, um, you know, add different types of transition, different types of movement to different body parts as well uh, for, you know, really unique and interesting results like this. So that's about it for uh, transition curves, guys. Uh, hopefully you learned a lot. And thanks so much for watching. Make sure you check out our other videos on our YouTube channel and our forums at forum.reillusion.com. And I'll see you in the next video.